We shall be using this chart now. This is the chart on Jada Sika. Now, of the 52 Jada Sikas, we first classify them into three groups. 13 Anya Samana, 14 Akusala, and 25 Sobana, oh, the beautiful ones. And the Anya Samana, see the seekers, they are the general ones. They can associate both with a Sobana Chaitas as well as the Sobana Chaitas. So they can walk two ways, both you know, for good and for bad. They can do two ways. And again, we subdivide the Anya Samana into two groups. Sabha Chaita Sadharana. Sabha Chaita. That means all Chaita. Sadharana associate. So these seven Chaita seekers, they associate with all Chaitas. Now there are seven of them. I got only three here. Four were missing. <laughs> so you fill it up. <laughs> now what are they? So we say Padwe Sanche. Ejimana. So don't forget that. <laughs> Pawe Sante Ejimana. So what are they? Pasa Vedana Sanya Chaitana Ekagada Jivi Tendriya Manasikara. Seven of them. So these seven, they are essential for the Chaita to cognize the essence object. Now, to be aware of his sense object. So we have six sense doors. So now when the sense object, they appear in one of these doors, it would be Manasikara that first take notice of this sense object. Now, it take notice of that by paying attention to it and by directing the cheater and the seekers towards it. Now, so... We say to the seeker, it acts, it walks like a rudder of the boat or rudder of the ship, no? that directs the cheetah and the the seeker so that they can go to the sense object. Now, then the pasa makes the contact between the sense object and the cheetah to the seeker. No? So sense object is material, cheetah to the seekers are they are the spiritual. So, you no, know, they make the contact. And when the pasta makes the contact, the feeling or sensation arises. So it arises at the same time as Vedana. So that Vedana, we, you know, we say Vedana is feeling or sensation. And again, Vedana itself enjoys you know, that sensation. So it is twofold. The sensation itself is Vedana. And it is Vedana that enjoys the sense, you know, the, the taste of the sense object. So when though Vedana enjoys the sense, we think we enjoy it. So actually in Abhidhamma, there's no we, no I. No, only Vedana is enjoying. <laughs> so, okay. Then Sanya take note of, no, takes note of the the shape, the features of the sense object, so that you can recognize it. No, it helps you to recognize each sense object, and it helps you to know or to know the identify this sense object when you meet this sense object again in the future. Then, no, we say the chitana, chitana acts on its associates, no, on the other chitta seekers and chitta to do their respective functions. No, to do their respective function. And Jivi Tendriya is essential to sustain the vitality of these entities so that they can function their, no, their job well. And Ekagata is also essential. It unites the Chitta and Jiri Seekers no, to be focused on the sense object so you can be aware of the sense object all the time. So, all these seven, they have to walk you know, unisonly 
And by that, we remember, we know, or we are aware of the sense object. Now we can go to the next group. On page 66, we call the Pakinaka Chetasika. No, Pakinaka means the particular. So there are six Chetasikas. They associate both with Sovana and Asovana Chetas. But they don't associate with all. They associate only with those which they should associate, which they should associate. So they are sort of particular, not only with particular <laughs> cheetahs they will associate. Now let's read the six of them. No? We take a initial application or thought conception, which are sustained application or discussive thinking, adhimokha, decision or determination, viriya, effort or energy or exertion, piti, rapture or interest, chanda, wish, desire or will. Again, you can remember these six by taking the initial no, consonant. And you make it rhyme. So, oh, we don't take the, the, the initial. We take like this. Tetcha vipi chan adhi. Take this as pakinaka. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, tet, no? So here, yeah, tek, we tek, no? So, tek cha, so we take the middle consonant here. Tetcha vipi. Chan, Chanda is Chan, Adi, Adi is Adi Mauka. So, you got it? Okay, you better take notes. <laughs> now you want to remember it. Tetcha we pi, Tetcha we pi, Chan, Adi. Take these as Pakinaga. Take these as Pakinaga. Okay? So, of these six, we have already come across three of them as jhana factors. Now, vitaka, vichara, and piti, they appear as jhana factors. We already know that. Now, vitaka, it applies the chitta and jitta sikha, no? apply the mind to, be, no? to get onto the sense object. So, it applies the mind to get to the sense object. So, Manasikara directs the Chita and Jirisika towards the senses. And it is Viteka, not apply it to, towards the senses. Just like you direct a person, oh, no, my house is over there. So you give the direction, it's a Manasikara. So the person will go to the house. But it cannot get into the house yet. So it takes the Viteka, no, so to call the people in the house or to open the gate so you can get in. So there will be Viteka, no, applying it. So, and then the pastor has to make the contact with the people inside. So, they you know, walk step by step there. So, here, we take a, applies the mind, that is, Chitta and Jiri Seekers, onto the sense object, you know, to get onto the sense object. And when it applies on the sense object, you start thinking about this sense object. So, it initiates a thought process. So we also call it thought conception. No, thought conception because it initiates a thought process about that sense object. Now the next one, vichara, sustain application. So that means it keeps on applying the sense object, uh, the chitta and jiri seekers towards the sense object again. No, so it applies again and again. So we say the chitta and jiri seeker, they examine the sense object again and again. And by that examining, we also say it is just like discussive thinking. No? And then this Vitekha and Vichara, of the two, Vitekha is the Purana, Vichara is the follower. So uh, on, I think, no? on page 67, if you look at number two, Vichara, no? and the second paragraph there, Vitekha is a forerunner of vichara. The two should be distinguished thus. 
Like the flapping of a bird about to fly as we take up. Like its planning movements in the sky as we chatter. Or like the beating of a drum or bell as we take up. And like its reverberation as we chatter. So when you sound a bell, no, the big bell, so when you sound it, boom, so in the sky as we chatter. Or like the beating of a drum or bell is we take it, and like its reverberation is we chatter. So when you sound a bell, no, the big bell, so when you sound it, doom, so that is we take it. So doom, doom, so you get a reverberation, that is we chatter. <laughs> so they always go like that, no? Or one in front and one following it. And then we say Adimaka. Or one in front and one following it. And then we say Adimaka. Adimaka we say decision or making the determination. Whether the sense object is good or bad. No, whether the sense object is good or bad. And it never waver no, in its decision. So it always makes the decision as it should be. So, no, it is impartial, that means, no, it always do its job, no, and viriya is quite significant, no, that viriya, we say the effort or the energy or the exertion that you make, so when you are walking hard, so you are exerting the effort, no, that is viriya, or we say this man, no, he walks very hard, and he Persevere. No? So when you find difficulty, so you like to stop it, no? to give up. Now we, this viriya is a sort of courage. It is also a sort of courage. So though you find you encounter the difficulty, you won't give up. No? So you keep on no? uh, doing it. So we say perseverance. No? You persevere it. So here also we give you now the, the second paragraph of Viriya, please look at again on number four Viriya, the second paragraph. It has the characteristic of supporting, upholding, or sustaining its concomitants. As a leaning old house, supported by new pillars, may not fall, so also concomitants, supported by Viriya, will not give way. So you can imagine it, and oh how it's leaning, no, it is about to fall down, it's leaning here. Now if you support by a pole, what will fall down? No, it won't fall down, it would stay just like that. So Vidya is just like the support, no, like the support. So when you perform a new job, like learning Abhidhamma, for example, so you find some difficulty, you are thinking of not running away. <laughs> So, if you have good Vidya, so Vidya would not let you to run away. So it supported. it. Now you, you cannot run, so it supported. it. No. So it keeps on supporting that, so that means you keep on doing it. So finally, you will win. No, you will win. So like also in fighting, no, you are outnumbered by the enemy, so you want to retreat. Now you get a new reinforcement. Ah, you become, no? So you become... No, encourage, so you keep on fighting. So just like that, no, like the reinforcement, the Vidya. So Vidya is a very, very, no, the reliable Tita seeker. And because of that, you will win success. So the Buddha said, no, the Buddha said, Vidya Vato Kainama Kaman Na Sichati if you are Vidya, your effort is strong. There is no, no, no job or nothing that you cannot win, no, that you cannot succeed. So we know this effort is a key to success. No, if you read about the books no, for success, so that this effort, Vidya, no, is one of the prominent one. So it is one of your key to success. No, so. 
be you know, uh, blessed the good media you know, in your learning abhidhamma so you will master the abhidhamma you know, so okay then we go to the next one pt is again very significant so you can look at on page 68 you know about that pt so bet pt we generally translate it as rapture joy happiness interest or enthusiasm now when you get something that you like you you are joyful so that joy is pity now you see oh your lover or your sweetheart oh you're very very you no know, excited uh, no, you're glad so that is also pity now this pity you no know, is a sort of energy it is also a sort of energy no we we say a weary exhausted traveler he is very thirsty he can hardly walk now a man coming from the opposite direction to him oh my friend you just walk on you know about a hundred yards you will see a pond full you know full of clear water you can drink water as much as you like and you can eat the lotus plant as much as you like so you know, when you get that good news so what this traveler would do no now he no he is so weary when he no he heard this good news he would run no he would run oh no they would run there the same day no some people when they uh, say you know the heart broken or some like that so they are they lie on bed now if their lover comes here oh if they have oh they will get up <laughs> so there is pity now this pity has five stages so they are given on page you know 68 at the bottom there there are five stages of pity one is kotaka pity we call it the thrill of joy that causes the flesh to creep so you might you know experience this pity when you are very very you not know, joyful you no know, you are very glad at the time you no know, you may have creepy <laughs> creeping of the flesh is <laughs> so you no know, your body hair will rear up <laughs> and you get the, you know, the sensation so also in meditation you will get this pt very often no so i first meditated in mahasi meditation center so at the time no i was the president of the buddhist association in the institute of education so i organized 40 students you no know, both coeds and uh, and students and some teachers so we we went to mahasi and you no know, meditated together so after three four days meditating i got that you not know, the sensation the creep <laughs> the creeping on the flesh very often so i did not know at that time what's that but when i learn a bit more oh it is a cold cup pt is getting up then after about two more days i got number two the kanika pt now instantaneous joy like a flash of lightning so this is the longer trail now except electricity flows from your no from your say from your head to your toe no it passes like electricity pass oh you get that sensation the longer sensation no so the longer trail that is we call kanika pt and again after two or three days no we encounter number three we call no alkantika pt no that o is go o you know we usually pronounce o when you put k there it becomes out out can tika pt the flood of joy like the breakers on a sea shore so if you be to the sea sea shore as malaysia has so many beaches jungle beaches you now with the coral reefs that's what i read <laughs> in the book <laughs> so your view of the sea shore if you went into the in the in the sea shore when you get the uptight so when the tide you no know, comes up it lifts your body up now when the tide goes back retreat you, you know you fall down again so you get the sensation you no know? lift it up and coming down lift it up coming down 
The same thing you will get in meditation. <laughs> when you get this pity. No, so, though you are sitting there, your sensation is you are li being lifted up, and then you falling down, lifted up, being falling down. So, the meditators would say, oh, now at that time they are writing kites, they say, or they are on the boats, they say. <laughs> so, if you get you know, the sensation, please be aware, it is the Agantika Piti. And number four is Ogbega Piti. Ogbega uh, Piti. Uh, it is the um, uplifting, oh no, no, no. No, the, the Agantika is like the flood of joy. Like the breakers on the seashore, like you are being lifted up by, by the, the tide here. Now this Obrega PT is stronger. Now it, it is stronger. It is uplifting joy, which may lift one to float in the air. In, in one of the, uh, the Buddhist non literature, I came across you know, one instance there, a pregnant lady. She would like to go to the, you know, the, the, the Hill Pagoda festival. But all the rest of the people, they, they went to the, you know, to the pagoda. So tell, telling her, you better stay home. Send your, you know, far advance in your, in your conception. So it will be danger because so many people, they might squeeze your, you know, your belly. So you, you better stay home, he said. So the rest went there. So she could see far from, from, you know, from her house about the pagoda on the hill there. And some people going up and down there. So she would like to go there very much. So she paid you know, homage to the Buddha, to the pagoda there. And, she, and then you know, she developed joy. So you know, she paid homage. So she want to be there. So she developed you know, the, the joy. And the joy becomes so strong that she actually flew through the air and got to the you know, pagoda. So before them, her members, her family members arrived there, she was there. You know, she was there. <laughs> so you may feel like that. No? But there's very rare to see people who really fly or you know, put that up. Oh, no. In my case, you know, we get this, this PT. So at that time, while you are you know, doing the meditation, so, you know, in Mahasi, actually, we are you know, noting the arising and falling on the belly. So just as you note two, three times, you know, it seems that your body, the whole body dissolves, full dissolves, you know, and then you are lifted up. So you are, you know, you are shot up to the sky. So it seems you are floating in the sky now, now above the clouds there. Very good sensation there. <laughs> so... I think there is the Obega, the, the Obega PT. No, you get that sensation being lifted up. And also we have some medita uh, no, some meditation master, like Lady Seado. No, so people saw him while he was meditating. No, his body was no, about three feet above the ground. No, so he can stay in the air because of this uplifting force. Okay? So you try it. <laughs> so number five is the parana piti. No, we call it parana piti. Subfusing joy, which pervades the whole body like a full-blown bladder, or like a lump of cotton moistened in oil, or like a flood overflowing creeks and ponds. So that means the joy. No, it... It perfuses you know, the whole of your body, so it permeates throughout your body, so you feel you know, very pleasant and joyful, you know, as if you are full out of that pity for a long, long time. So there is parana pity. Okay, you do meditation. You now you experience these five stages of pity. So when you get that pity, you no, know, so don't think that you, know, you are. See, uh, seeing very, very you know, good Dhamma also, you only build up some concentration, that means. You no, know, you just get some concentration. No insight yet at this stage. <laughs> no insight. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, we go to, to the six, there's chanda, we say. Now, so, chanda. Now, we translate as here, they say, you know, coordination, intention, wish, desire, or will. No? I think the chief characteristic of chanda is the wish to do. So, I think that wish and desire is a good word for chanda. No, it is like the stretching out of the hand, stretching of the hand to grasp an object. Also, a desire for something without any attachment to the thing is chanda. Chanda is ethically neutral, and no, it is a neutral term. And it should be differentiated from immoral lupa, which is a desire with attachment. So, no desire. Now, after sitting for, say, two hours, no, in this class, so when it comes about two hours, you are, you are get a little tired and you want to get up. No, so that one, the wish to get up is chanda. So, if when you, if you wish to get up, you get up. No, as soon as the class over, you will get up. No, because you have that chanda. For me, I've been sitting for, uh, standing for two hours, so I have the wish to sit down. <laughs> so, no, so whatever you do, actually, it is the wish, no, that, that goes first. So, because you want, no, say to raise your hand, so you raise your hand. And because, no, you wish to go, you go. And because you want to know Abhidhamma, you come and listen to Abhidhamma class now. So this is the wish. No, this is the wish. And, you know, it is the first step in an action. So we say, you know, a journey of 1,000 miles begins with the first step. You no, know? so that first step is uh, the chanda. You no, know? so if you begin the first step, then a step a day. No, you arrive at your destination one day anyway. So if you start going, you'll get there. And not this wish. Not this wish. If you had no desire, no, you will not go. So also we have it. It's say in Myama. No, we have a say in Myama. La Luli Anigali. If you wish to come, it's very near. It's very near. Mala Luli Awiji. If you don't wish to go, it is very far. No, they say. So, your neighbors are very close to you, but you don't wish to see them, so you don't go to them. No, now your sweetheart or your lover is far away, not 200 miles away. You want to see him, the wish is there, so you go. I went several times myself. <laughs> So that's Chanda. Now this wish, when it becomes very strong, this, this wish, you know, it becomes a will. So the strong desire, the strong wish is the will. So again you have the saying, if there is a will, there is a way. No, so if your will, if your wish is very strong, no, you will exert the effort no, so that you will achieve it. No, so if your wish to become a doctor is very strong. And you will strive on so that you will become a doctor. So if you have the wish, very strong wish to be a you know, successful businessman, so you will try to do it to be a successful man and you will become it. So the same thing like Viriya. No, we say this Chanda is also a key to success. It is a key to success. So it is you no know, one quality that you can rely on to be successful in life. So here we have you know, two very good qualities, you know, the Virya and Chanda. But remember, this Virya and Chanda, since they belong to the Anya Samana, that is, they can walk you no know, two ways. So they can be on the good side as well as on the bad side. So some people, you no, know, they would like to be a big gambler. The wish is a big gambler. So they will become a big gambler. No, so if you wish to be, you know, a big cheater, you become a big cheater if you have the way. So remember, it works two ways. So make it good. <laughs> make it good. Okay then. So we, no, we finished the 
സിക്സ് പിന്നഗസ് ആൻഡ് സെവൻ സബാറ്റ സാധാരണ and that will make up the 13 anya samana now we can go to the next group we call akusala chitasika so it is given on page 69 so akusala means immoral no immoral chitasika that means ethically immoral no ethically according to the code of ethics they are immoral they are immoral ones and again they may be divided into four subgroups so the first subgroup we call moha chatuka no moha chatuka so no ma chatuka means a group of four no chatuka means a group of four that is led by moha moha is the leader in this group now this four chitta seeker they will associate with all akusala chaita and because of that we call them akusala sadharana now no you, you can compare with the name here when we say sabha chaita sadharana sadharana mean they associate with all chaita right sabha chaita sadharana here we call them akusala sadharana so this four no this four chaita sika here the moha chatuka this four no they will associate with all the akusala chaita so because of that we call them akusala sadharana and you will find out later on no, whatever you did you do these four chaita sikas are always no at the background no they are the ones that that you know give you the motive the force to perform the wicked deeds no so they are Now what are they please read them number 1 is moha avijja you know and the meaning delusion ignorance and downest number 2 ahirika you no know, ahirika lack of moral shame or impudence three anuttapa you no know, again we call not you no know, o is o so when you put t you become a not a not that a lack of moral dread or recklessness and number 4 is udacha unrest or restlessness or distraction of the mind so now we explain them in some detail at the bottom of page samti now for moha there we give you some explanation there now this moha is very very important now it is the worst no in moral chida sika it is the worst one now you should know it now this meaning is very important moha is the ignorance of the true nature of the sense objects no so when we say ignorance no we don't say no we don't mean that you are ignorant of no everything we don't mean that but you are ignorant of the ultimate realities no we are ignorant of the true nature of the sense object now by that no what do we mean no we are ignorant of the true nature of sense object so when you look at me how do you see me you see me as a man no as a person as dr mon so that mean you don't see the true nature of no the sense object because the man the person of tamon no do not exist <laughs> so we have already discussed it we did do, do not they, they do not exist what really exists is nama rupa we say now when we say nama rupa you don't take this body as a rupa no you don't take the, this a rupa this body you know the body is just no a convention of truth it is panyati we say no it is panyati just a discrimination is a body it is not the rupa no the ultimate rupa is formless formless shapeless that you cannot see no that you cannot see what you are seeing is it's not the real rupa no it is just a delusion no it's just a delusion so if you have say if you look me with the x-ray eye if you have the x-ray eye how do you see me how do you see me you don't see my clothing you don't see my flesh you see only the skeleton no so if you look with the x-ray eye no 
you don't see this this person you just say a skeleton that's all you would see now if you look with the gamma rays <laughs> it has to shuttle them so the gamma rays can pass through the bone so empty no empty no so science also say the body is empty no the body is empty science also says no so in science we say the body is made up of atom so billions of atom so if you take the nucleus of all these atoms that makes a body now that what the scientists they estimate so you will get the size of a pinhead no all the no all the nucleus the nuclei of the atom that make my body if you group them together no is only the size of a pinhead so only that size of pinhead is solid all the other is just space <laughs> no so you have the nucleus electron revolving so in between there is big space no the sun is a center and the earth the moon are revolving around the sun so in between we have large space the same thing no the body is empty so if you look with that eye there's no no person no body no no so so, so what you will see is just illusion we say no just like you see the clouds or you think oh there's no the it's like look like a way or oh, that cloud look like a bird no oh it look like a dragon but you go to the clouds with aeroplane when you get there it disappear nothing is there the same thing so don't take this body as the rupa <laughs> no, don't take it as a rupa so the ultimate rupa is formless shapeless that you cannot see no that we cannot see but you can see no with samadhi mind that is sama samadhi we say no sama samadhi the right concentration when the mind is associated with the right concentration you can see no this that the particles that make up the body we call the rupa kalapa just like the electron proton no they may have the body you can see you can see with them so no the real nature of the body is it is make up of nama and rupa okay both nama and rupa are formless no <laughs> shapeless so try to know that and they arise and dissolve very rapidly no both nama and rupa they arise and dissolve very rapidly so the same idea is put up by science science also say no these atoms they arise and dissolve you no know, all the time you no know, they are changing all the time at least so you no know, we say when this you no know, nama and rupa they arise and dissolve very rapidly we say they are impermanent in nature you no know, because of that you say they are impermanent in nature and they are not satisfactory or it amounts to suffering actually dukkha dukkha can be translated in many way and the best word is actually suffering no so seriously what is not permanent is suffering the buddha said no, that man they would be true no so you have to imagine so you cherish this nama rupa and they are dissolving all the time that you cherish this nama rupa is dissolving all the time so you are being tortured by the the, the solution all the time so it amounts to suffering right that is dukkha suffering they have the nature of anicca impermanence dukkha suffering and anatta anatta not self no not person not self not ego so there is no self there is no person no no i so all uh, they are no arising and dissolving all the time so which would you call dr mon you cannot call anything because as soon as they arise they dissolve no nothing is permanent so you cannot say no oh that can be sent of the mon no nothing so we say not self <laughs> that is ananta and another one no another one is asupa so are you familiar with asupa no asupa means foundest no foundest loathsomest so the buddha said that nama rupa is no loathsome disgusting very disgusting so we think we are oh so charming no so beautiful that's what you think no 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 the buddha said no nothing that is charming or beautiful so you are looking no yourself as a body as a person you are looking as a whole as a person 
So the Buddha said, no, he gave the direction. So don't look at a person, no, superficially. And as a whole, try to analyze him. <laughs> so, so the Buddha gave, uh, no, give the, the guidelines. So you analyze first and do 32 parts. Head hair, body hair, the nails, no, the nails, the teeth, the skin. So these are the five outer, no, the uh, organs we say. Then you go in the flesh, no, the veins, the arteries, the blood, the bone, the marrow, and the liver, no, the heart, the lungs, intestines, and of course, no, your excrement, the urine, no, the past, so, so, no, now you examine each of them, which is beautiful, no, which is beautiful. So we say, oh, no, our hair is sacred, it is on our head. So this hair we regard is very sacred to us. Now when we are taking the soup, your hair drops into the soup. So how do you feel? No? About that, that hair there? Oh, you like your soup with the hair? <laughs> so it becomes disgusting, no? So like in the shampoo, no, no, uh, advertisement. Like also in, we have in Myanmar, no, they have different shampoos. So in their advertisement, they, you know, they take the picture of beautiful ladies with their hair all bright and then sparkling. So they, you know, give the various angles of that. So, so beautiful you like to follow her. No, we, we also have one shampoo that has the name Follow Me. So, <laughs> so, so after watching at the, at that beautiful lady showing the hair, very beautiful hair, we like to follow her. <laughs> Now, now for the man that wants to follow her, every morning she combs her hair. So when she combs her hair, several, no, hair comes out. So, so she will give that person. So you admire my hair, you take them. No, you take them, keep them well in your pocket. When you take a soup, put them in the soup and take it. <laughs> you cannot do it, no. So sometimes we admire the ladies, oh, with very beautiful knees. Oh, their knees are so beautiful, like pearls, you say, you know, shiny in some light. Well, if you admire so, so when she cut the knees, she gave it to, to you. Now, since you admire, you keep this. So when you eat your dinner, you put it. <laughs> no, you won't you won't do it. Now, so some ladies, when they smile, oh, you see, very beautiful. Their teeth are so beautiful. Just like the pearls, not being arranged there. Now, she has a tooth edge and has to extract one tooth and she gives the man who admires her. Now, since you admire my tooth, you make it a locket and you put it on your neck. <laughs> what do you do it? No, you won't do it. So even these parts that you think very beautiful, as soon as they are of your body, they are disgusting. So you cannot not deny it. You cannot deny it, no? What the Buddha said is correct. So what is beautiful? <laughs> what is beautiful in a person? So nothing, no, nothing. So you have to, not that saying, beauty is can dig, we say. No, that's the West, the West people say, the Western people say. Beauty is can dig, that's very right, very correct. No, so the skin, only the skin, it looks very beautiful. So the skin is very thin. So you just take out the skin of your lover. No, you try to take it out, no? Of course, by imagination, no? So if you can take kill of the skin of your lover or your sweetheart, how would she look? No? <laughs> Just like a carcass, no, in the butcher's shop, the same thing, no? Like that, the carcass, <laughs> a lamb carcass, a goat carcass, the same thing. So you won't like to embrace anymore. <laughs> so, no? So they have these four characteristics. So we get that uh, on and on that, that first paragraph under moha. Now we have that there. Now moha is the ignorance of true nature of sense objects. Living and non-living things are mega of just nama and rupa. No, which are endowed with the four common characteristics of Anicca, impermanence, dukkha, suffering, anatta, non-self, and asupa, lutsamlist. As moha, 
veils our mental eyes and shields us from seeing the true nature of things. We cannot see the extremely rapid and incessant arising and dissolving of Nama Rup. We get confused and take the opposite characteristics to be true. So we see things as nature, no? Permanent. So a nature, you make it nature, permanent. And for the supa, a supa, uh, for the suffering, the dukkha, no? You see it as sukha, pleasant. And atta as self uh, or person. And supa as beautiful. So that is our outlook. No, when we look at ourselves and other people, we think, oh, we are permanent. Since we were born, no, up to today, oh, we are permanent. So I'll be here tomorrow teaching you to teach you again. So no, I will live on. That means, no, I think I, I will be permanent. So you think you are permanent too. And we also think that, oh, enjoying the sense pleasure is, is, is blissful, happiness. So we think, oh, to have this no, body is sukha. No, we say, instead of dukkha, you say it is sukha. And also you will see, you take it as, no, as a person, as self, as I, that is atta. You take it as I, atta. And you think you are handsome or beautiful, that is sukha. So that is what our real outlook, no, on the world. So, no, our outlook of the world is just the opposite of the real things. No, so you should know that, no, our outlook, everybody's outlook is just the opposite, no, the opposite of what, no, of the reality. So, no, if you have that wrong vision, so we say moha gives you the wrong vision, no, distorted vision, upside down vision, no, so you take that upside down wrong vision as to be true. So if you persuade, no, According to this outlook, then you will go to the wrong direction. No, you will go to the wrong direction. And though you think you will get you know, the happiness, though you try to chase for happiness, you will never get happiness. No, never you will get happiness. Because in sense pleasure, no, there is no substantial happiness. No, all these sense pleasures, no, they just arise and dissolve. They are just within a sensation. They arise and dissolve. We say fleeting. No, they are fleeting, the, this sensation. Fleeting and transient. No, so they are not permanent. It's nothing to grab. Oh, it's so good. Nothing like that. And you will get bored with this sense pleasure very soon. No, because this moha gives you the wrong vision. Oh, everything is beautiful. Oh, they are not sub like a person, they are subjects, they are objects. So you will see later on Lopa, crave for them. No, because of this wrong vision, Lopa, crave for this sense pleasure. So you are enjoying with the sense pleasure with Lopa. No, greed rooted chaita, you are enjoying that. So when you enjoy with greed rooted chaitas, so joy also arises, pity arises there. Sukha, pleasant feeling arises. No, that piti sukha, we take it to be, no, good, to be pleasant. That, that's what we, that is a sense pleasure, is that. But they are not permanent. They arise and it is off, it's gone. So you always have to exert new effort in order to endure more and more of that. No, so constant exertion of the effort to enjoy more and more of the sense pleasure is what? Suffering. No, the constant effort you have to struggle. You're struggling. Now you struggle, you want to enjoy it. If your desire is not fulfilled, then suffering. No. So, very soon you will find this lopa, greed, is always looking for new, no, new sensation. New sensation. So if you get the same sensation, no, for a long time you get bored. No, you get bored. So even the song that you like very much, and the movie that you like very much. You don't like to, to watch this movie twice, three or twice, no, at one night. You don't want to do, no, you get bored. So there are no, no real happiness in sensation. So if you taste to sensation, where do you end up? You end up in hell. No, you end up in hell. 
So if you just chase the the, no, the, the sense pleasure, just love the mula chaita. So when you don't get, you get frustrated, you get dosa mula chaita. So when you are no, absent-minded, you get moha mula chaita. Only these chaitas. So when you die, you go to the world for boats. No, you go to the world for boats. So it's better to get the right view, <laughs> to get the right vision. <laughs> so this moha, no, is the very, no, it, it, it distorts your your vision. So no, though you see no the things, you don't see the true nature. So no, you take the other nature. So we say this moha blinds you. No, it keeps you in darkness. No, in total darkness because you do not know the true nature. It's the same like you are blind. No, or you are in darkness. So we call it avijja. No, moha is called avijja. There is there is darkness. So well, you get some idea. If you know so much, then you might not come to the Bhidama class tomorrow. You know, <laughs> you may go to the meditation class or something like that. Okay, let's go to the ahirika. No, ahirika. So we say ahirika. No, the please look at the origin of meaning. The ahirika is lack of moral shame or impudence. So that lack of moral shame or moral shamelessness is you not know, the most uh, the important meaning of this. The ahirika. So you now we say it is just like a village pig. There in the second paragraph, there we compare with a village pig that does not feel loathsome in eating nice soy. They say now when moha blinds you. You don't know what is good or bad, no. So what is bad, what is evil, what is wicked, no. You don't think it is very low to perform that, so you don't feel ashamed to do it. No, you don't feel ashamed to do it. So that shamelessness is called ahirika. So it, no, it uh, this ahirika, it also, no, it also encourage you to perform wicked deeds because you don't feel ashamed to do it. And you don't think, you don't know that it's very low. No, it is very low. Oh, no, the noble person won't do this uh, immoral deeds. But you don't know that it is immoral. No, since you don't know it is immoral, you just look for your gain. Oh, I gain by cheating him. I gain. No, so by stealing, I gain. So you just look for your gain. No, for your gain because you think it is I is present. So you perform this immoral thing. You do, you don't feel ashamed. So this moral shamelessness, you no, know, it urges you to perform the evil deeds. And anuttapa, we say it is lack of moral dread, you no, know, lack of moral dread. So again, you no, know, you don't know about karma and its result. You don't know karma and result because of moha. You no, know, moha blinds you. So you, we don't know about karma and its result. So if just yesterday I tried to explain to you, even in smashing in mosque too. No, or in killing a chicken, we developed billions and billions of immoral karma. So, no, that will send you to the world for boats many times. No, get you, no, will torture you there for many, many existence. So, when you do not know the karma and the result, no, you are not afraid to perform to kill. Oh, this must be do. It hurts me. So, bang you, you smash it. No, you don't. You, know, you don't pay any attention. Just you look for yourself, no, for the for the happiness of yourself. So do you think the uh, enemies get rid of them? No, get rid of them. So anuttapa, ahirika, no. So and the the next one is udacha, no, the restlessness of the mind. So because of udacha, your mind is restless. No, your mind is wandering from one sense object to another. No, and it is being distracted. We say your mind is being distracted, wavering, restless. So it is like the flag in the wind. No, when you put up a flag in the wind, it flutters. No, it flutters like that. So the same thing. It makes your mind flutters like that. And it's also compared with a heap of ash. Now, if you throw a big stone into the ash, no, the the the, the heap of the ash, the ash, no, will no will will be blown out, blown away, dispersed. It's the same thing, it makes your mind dispersing. So when your mind is restless, you cannot think deeply. No, you cannot think deeply. So whether this is good or bad, you cannot reason. You cannot think. No, this uh, 
of dacha and makes your mind restless. So this four, no, this four jada seeker. Here we have moha keeps you in darkness, no, to be ignorant of the realities, to be ignorant of karma is the result, to be ignorant what is good or bad. So ahirika is not ashamed to perform evil deeds, and anottapa not afraid, no, to perform evil deeds, and udhacha makes you restless. So that you cannot think deeply. So, you no, know, these four, they always, you no, know, encourage you to perform evil deeds. So whenever you perform evil action, they are always involved. You no, know, they are the original. They are the originators, you might say. You no, know, so, well, let's go, uh, we'll go to the next group. We call Lobha. Three, three means three. You no, know, so with Lobha as the leader. Now, please look at the page 70 again, no, at number 2, near the top. Now, please look at the page 70 again, no, at number 2, near the top. There you get low bar tree. Now, this low bar tree, we call pa pancha dhamma. No, pa pancha dhamma, we'll explain later on in the text. No, they are the, the forces that extend your existence one after another. No, that prolong your existence. So they are called pancha, pa pancha dhamma. Now let's read the five, six, seven. Lopa, raga, it's also called raga or tanha. So these are the names of lopa. So the meaning is greed, attachment, and sensuous desire. Deity, no deity. Wrong view or evil opinion. Mana, conceit or pride. So, no, for further explanation, you can look on page 72. Near the bottom, we get lopa there. No, so, lopa is a strong desire for sensuous objects or jhana happiness. It will never give up this intrinsic nature of desiring, however much one may possess. Even the whole much one may possess. Even the whole wealth on earth cannot satisfy the desire of Lopa. It is always on the lookout for something new. Thus one cannot be truly happy if one cannot eliminate lopa. And the second nature of lopa is attachment or clinging to sensuous object or to jhana or jhana happiness. This nature of attachment is compared with the sticky nature of monkey catching glue. So, please note, this lopa has two characteristics. You should know these two characteristics. Uh, what are the two? The two characteristics? The first one is desire or craving. No, desire or craving. And the second one is attachment. No, attachment. So, first for most of us, we have desire for the sense enjoyment. No, the, uh, the sense desire. That is lupa. No, that is the lupa. So, when we can develop the jhana, we, we tell you uh, yes, uh, last time, I think, when in order to develop the jhana, you have to abandon the sense enjoyment. No, but now when you get the jhana, the jhana bliss is better than sense enjoyment. So you crave for it again. No, you become attached to it again. So that means you just enjoy with this jhana. You cannot perform inside meditation to get emancipation. You, you can't go further. Because of this attachment. No, so this attachment lopa. So the lopa, first, it craves for the sense pleasure, the sense enjoyment. So, no, this lopa, it wants to get, no, to get, to, to accumulate wealth. So, how much money do you want to get? No, what do you think? What would be, what should be enough? No, you think, is it one million dollars? Or the, no, one billion dollars or so. No, so, no, you can, you can, you can actually feed 
Now, when you don't have any m- money yet, oh, if I have about no ten thousand dollars, that would be enough. But when you get ten thousand, oh, it's not enough, and I need one million. So when you get one million, oh, it's not you know, so little. I have to make an- another ten million. So that is low part. No, that is low part. So it will never give up this craving or desire. Always keep on desiring. If you get one, what you want. It will desire for another one. So every day you have one thousand and one desires. We <laughs> say one thousand and one desire. You can never satisfy your desire. So so long you are having do a lupa, you will be always you know, craving for something, desiring for something. So that means you, know, you are not you know, satisfied. You are not contented. So you will not be happy. No, you will not be happy. And the Western philosophers, no, they reason very correctly, like Plato, no, like Socrates. They say, so so long a man has desire, no, that means he is not complete. No, that means he will suffer. No, so long you have your desire, no, that desire is not satisfied, then you are suffering. No, so you get suffer suffering. So this lopa. The more you, the, the more you get, the bigger it grows. Just like drinking salty water, the sea water. So to quench your thirst, you no, know, you drink the salty water. You get more thirsty. You, know, you get more thirsty. So the Buddha said, when he was a universal monarch, no, universal monarch by the name of Mandhatu. So he traveled you know, to several parts of the world with his flying chariot. No, he flew to several parts. So, in some parts of the world, he said, "Oh, the people were so poor. So, no, by his power, the, the karma power, he could make no, the 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 gold and silver to rain down from the sky. So, no, if he no, uh, he, no, he 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 strike his arm like that, then he can make the rain, no, the the gold pieces, silver pieces to rain to rain down." So the villagers, oh, they, they scramble for this, you know, the gold and silver. But he found out, however much I rain down, they were never satisfied. <laughs> they were never satisfied. So you have that, you know, you have that idea also. And, you know, just like the American students used to tell us, you no, know, used to tell us, so they say, oh, we are very free. You no, know, we can enjoy whatever we want. We can enjoy all types of sense pleasure, but very soon we are fed up with all this. You become fed up, no? So, but but before you enjoy, you think it's very very appealing, it's very good. But when you and can enjoy it, it becomes bore, becomes fed up. So they try to get new excitement. So they say they end up with taking drugs. Taking drugs, so they get to that the drugs because the drugs can give you the the excitement. So they end up with that. No, that means this lupa no is never satisfied. And another characteristic is the attachment. So we accumulate well, we accumulate you no know, say friends, and we take a wife, a husband, we you know, have the children. So you no, know, we are happy with the children, you know, with our wife, but we are attached to this. No, you are attached to your well, to your house, to your motor car. So all these becomes the fetters to you. No, the fetters they bind you up. No, they keep you in prison. You cannot go away from this. No, so you get attached to this thing. So they say it is just like the mon- monkey catching glue. No, so the monkey catcher, he went to the forest. He saw several monkeys on very tall tree. He would like to catch them. No, he did not know how to catch them. So he got the idea. So he went around you know, the forest and cutting the tree so that the sticky gum would come up. So he collect all this sticky gum and you know, he boiled them together to get very very sticky you know, gum. They call it the monkey catching glue. So he applied this you know, this this glue on the tree trunks. So with a stick, so he he applied you know, the, this this uh, this glue. On the trees, on the on the no, on the trunks of the tree. So those monkeys, they are very curious. 
So they were watching this man. What is doing? <laughs> so he applied like that. What is doing? Now the sun rises. Now when you get the sun rays, you know, the sun rays is dispersed in the spectrum. You, know, you get various color spectrum there. So that monkey become more curious. So you now this monkey catcher now he went away and he hit you know, behind the bushes there. So the monkey would come down. Now they would come down because it is very inquisitive. So what is that? No, it's shiny. So it tried to, to touch with, a, with, one, with one paw. As soon as it touches, it, it gets stuck there. Oh, he cannot, you know, he cannot uh, take it out. So he pushed with the other hand. So the two hands are stuck now. So you, he kicked with the, one of the legs. So the leg is stuck. He kicked with another leg. The leg is stuck. So he tried to push with his head. The head is stuck. And as he tried to, you know, or struggle, his body also gets stuck. So he could <laughs> get out of there. So at that time, the monkey catcher would come up so he can catch it or can kill him. So the same thing, we are being attached to this possession of the well, the family, and we are, we are very soon caught up, you know, caught, uh, caught up by aging, honest, and very soon dead. Now we shall be caught up you know, with these things. So that is the Lopa. So, remember, because moha, no, gives you the wrong vision, that these things are very beautiful, uh, they are stable, permanent, no, so, they, you think they are to be blissful, so, lopa, great for them, no, so, these are, no, the very strong forces, no, that, no, that manipulate all the people in the world, all the creatures in the world, just imagine. You no, know, everybody is now spending for the sense pleasure. You no, know, because they don't know they are having the wrong vision. So if you just, you no, know, uh, try to be happy with the sense pleasure, you will end up, as I told you, in the world for boats. You no, know, so because of this, you no, know, when you say, oh, why people have, you know, most of the time we are having akusla chaita. No, we are having Agusla Chaita most of the time because the mind is being occupied, being influenced by Moha, Ahirika, Anattapa, Uddhaja, and this Lopa, and then again the, the two, you no, know, the, the companions of Lopa, Dechi and Mana. You no, know, they are very, very bad things. Now let's go to the Dechi. You no, know, the Dechi is given on, at the bottom of page 73. So, deity is usually translated as view. No, just deity, it means view, belief, opinion. So, sama deity means the right view. And micha deity would mean the wrong view. Here, as an immoral jeda seeker, deity is used in the sense of the wrong view. No, so though we say, we don't say micha deity. You take this deity as the mecha deity, not the wrong view, not the right view. No, it's the wrong view because it is akusala in moral. No, okay. Now, I think the second paragraph on page seventy-four is what reading there. No, the most basic and universal wrong view. No, I'm reading the second paragraph of page seventy-four. The most basic and universal wrong view is the personality belief. No, Sakkaya Diti. No, we call in Pali Sakkaya Diti. So we translate it as personality belief. Or ego illusion. That is Atta Diti. Now Sakkaya Diti believes that this combination of mind and body is I, you, he, she, man, woman, person, etc. Atta Deity believes in the existence of an Atta or soul, or ego, or life entity in the body. From this Sakaya Deity or Atta Deity, as well as from the ignorance due to Moha, there spring up thousands of wrong views. So, Sakaya Deity is one of the ten factors. I think you can leave that out. So, no? Just try to, no, try to understand like this. No, you try to understand like this. We say moha, no, blinds your mind to give you the wrong vision. 
So because of that wrong vision, no, you treat this body and mind as person. No, you see it as a person, or as I, as you, as he, you see it. So that is moha gives you the wrong vision. Now, deity takes that to be true. No, he takes that to be true. Oh, this is a man. This is a person. This is I. That is you. So it becomes the wrong view. Moha gives the wrong vision and no, deity takes it as, as the, uh, correct so it has the wrong view. So they say, you know, the basic, the, you know, the universal basic wrong view is the Sakaya deity. You no, know, Sakaya deity or Atta deity. They are you know, correlated anyway. But you are thinking this you know, combination of mind and body to be a person, to be I, to be you. No, so this belief is very, very strong, very, very strong. So you are thinking I is present. So when you think I really present, you become selfish. No, you become selfish. You just look for no, for your happiness, for your gain. So you don't care for others. So no, you will cheat. No, you will steal or you will do anything so for this. No, for your enjoyment. And also before the the for the you no know, betterment of this eye, you no know, for the for for the eye you no know, to to be better, so you start to invent many many wrong views, you no know, including many you no know, like the religious views, like in the, uh, the ideologies, you no know, like the politics. So in politics too, you have so many views, or oh, they would make you happy. No, they will make you like a paradise, that's what they think. So Karl Marx, they may, oh, materialism will make you like a, no, will, will, will give you a paradise. So, no, because of this wrong view. Oh, many, many wrong views, no, arises. So with the religious view, no, like I read in the newspaper once, no, in a newspaper one, once, they try to survey the, the various beliefs, religious beliefs, no, in the Brazil, no, in Brazil, then they found to be more than three thousand religious views present there. So if you take worldwide, there are no many, many thousands and thousands of religious views. So all these religious views, no, they have the intention to make you to make you good. Oh, no, you worship this God. So when you die, he will take you to heaven. So then you will be happy forever. You will enjoy forever. So for that better man of you, oh, you believe it. So you get various, various religious views because of the wrong view, deity. So, no, as I told you last time, this Sakaya deity, thinking I, I, you know, present, is very, very strong in us. No, so this study of Abhidhamma will help you, no, to lessen that that hole on the personality belief, it can lessen a little bit, not much, you know, no, not much, you no. Know? So even in meditation, you no. Know, so you have to see this chitta chitta sika arising and dissolving. So when you get to that, so you can, you, know, you can lessen this personal belief. You weaken it a little further more. So only when you get the first. No, the path consciousness, Sota Body Maker, you can eliminate this Sakaya deity. So only when we attain the first Mega and Plak, we shall be free from being, you know, from being born in the world of boats. Otherwise, with this you know, Sakaya deity, you have the ticket you know, to go to hell, to go to hell. You no, know? so sooner or later, no, you will be there, so don't worry. <laughs> so, now mana, you know mana, <laughs> mana, the, the next, the, the next series seeker, mana. So conceit, no, we translate it, or pride. So the two words, either conceit or pride is good for mana. So it is like deity. It is also a byproduct of moha and lopa. Moha gives the wrong vision that persons exist and that they are permanent, pleasant, beautiful. 
so Lobha clings to these uh, to these persons, especially the one represented by one sir. Mana looks on this self person as I am the best, I know most, I have no equals in the world. So you know, we have that feeling, you know, that conceit that you know, we are the best, or oh, we can do what other people can do. You know, so if somebody, like the, the parents, they try to admonish their children, so the children, you know, they wouldn't like to listen to them. So they would say, oh, mom, you don't need to say, I know it. <laughs> I know it. No, so you don't, you, you, you don't say it to me. So I know it, I already know it, that means mana. No, these are the mana. No, so you cannot tame the mother mind very, very much. And the Buddha said, there are three kinds of mana. No, that's very notable. No, at the, the, the next paragraph. This conceit of pride is of three kinds. The equality conceit we call, no, that's ordinary mana. Equality conceit. The inferiority conceit we call O mana. And the superior, superiority conceit, a T mana. As the saying goes, pride will have a fall. So pride and conceit is not a virtue to be proud of. Now that equality conceit, no, when two men quarrel, now, when you get, you know, heat up in conversation, you start quarrel. So they are equal. So they say, oh, you are a man, I am a man. Now, if you have the courage to fight, I also have the courage to fight. So that is the equal, no, equal manner, we say it. It is the ordinary manner. Now, the inferiority, no, the conceit. So you are below in rank no, with the other guy. So what would you say? Well, I'm standing on the ground. I have nothing to lose. Now, if you have the courage, come on, I challenge you. So, though you are, some people, they are trying to hit it. So, no, he was, uh, he was down and the other man is above him trying to hit him. But still, he won't give up and try to hit from, from, no, from below. So, that is the inferiority, the conceit we call it. And the superiority conceit also. Now those people who are high in rank, who are very rich, so they will say, oh, I'm much better than these fellows, so these fellows have nothing to do, I have, don't have to do nothing to do with them. So they look down on these people. So that is, no, a deep mana. So all of these are bad. <laughs> all of these are bad. So they can, no? they can give us trouble. So they can influence like that. So we sh should be aware of that. Now, where do we have the Papancha Dhamma? No, the Papancha Dhamma. So it will be at, uh, no, on the low part. Well, there's uh, some place there. As you look, you, you try no, to do it. <coughs> because these three things, no, they will give you new existence one after another, and they will prolong your circle of existence, and because of that we call them the Papancha Dhamma. So this three, you know, just try to remember as Papancha Dhamma. So let's go to the next group then. So the next group is the Dosa Chatoka. It is Chatoka, it's a group of four again. So they are given on page 70 again. We please go back to page 70. Now we look at number three this time. So they are dosa chatoka. <clears throat> now they are the hateful ones, we say. Now what are they? Dosa, also known as patiga, means hatred, anger, or aversion. Esa, no, Esa, actually, and you have a bar on A. No, there's a bar on A. Esa. Envy or jealousy. The next one, Macharya. No, Macharya. It is the avarice, stinginess, or the selfishness. Kukulcha, worry, scruples, or remorse. Well, let's look at the, the enlarged meaning on page 75. So, dosa is translated 
as hatred, anger, or aversion. It is the most destructive element in the world. So be aware of that. Now that dosa, anger, is the most destructive element in the world. You know, that is set by the Buddha. So and be aware also, you now when you get that anger, you know, that anger, dosa, arise in you, so it would burn you. No, it will burn you, it will hurt you first before it hurt other people. No, it hurts other people. So when you get the dosa, no, moha is always at the back. These four are always at the back. No, always at the back, we say the, the, the moha group. No, so the, as soon as you have the dosa, moha is there, so it blinds you, you get blind. No, as soon as you get angry, you, you become blind. You cannot reason anymore. No, you don't, you cannot reason anymore. And you, no, again, since you cannot reason, you don't hesitate, no, to fight or, no, to, to do anything. No, just like when I was in the United States, no, like in 1998, I was back in the United States, again, going around and giving the, the Dhamma talk there. So in every town I went to, when I look at the newspapers, there are always cases of murder. No, always cases of murder they find it. So, no, they could not control their anger. So in one town, they say the two men, no, they drove their cars and they have the appointed place there. So, no, so two of them, they don't get down from the car. Both of them, they remain on in their car. So they try to negotiate, no, about buying and selling heroin. No, the heroin. So, so number four. <laughs> So they try to negotiate and they, they cannot get agreement there. So they become you know, hot up in their conversation. And the other man, he just you know, pulled out his uh, revolver. He shot, he shot you know, at the other man. And that man was shot. And he knew he was shot. So he tried to drive his car you know, to the hospital. But he could not make it. He died on the way. So such a thing. You, know, you just, you, know, you get into argument. As you become the, get to the urge, man, the, the dosa arises. No, and the dosa, as soon as it arises, you are blind. So, you, no, you do anything at that time. So, you just, no, to protect yourself, you shoot at the other people. So, we have this sort of things also in Myanmar. Now, like in the festival, many people, as well as, especially the villagers, they come to the, no, to enjoy the festival. And they used to drink during this time. So, as there are so many people, they squeeze one another, they bump into another, they get quarrel, and then, you know, they brought the knife. So, they stabbed with the knife, so they, co they committed murder. So, many things, you know, happen like that because of this, this dosa. And this dosa is very hot, you know, very hot. So, we say, if you are angry, you no, know, don't, don't take any food because the food will not be digested anymore. No, <laughs> the food will not digest. No? So, even very beautiful woman, no? as soon as she become angry, so, no, the, 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 the tips of the, the ears and the nose and the cheeks, no, becomes reddish, and her face becomes, no, just like a, uh, like a giantess, you know, so it, it becomes very, very frightening, so it is better to leave her, no, it is better to leave her, <laughs> because, no, she would do something, no, very, very bad to you. So, no, this madosa is not a good one. So, it is also compared with a poisonous snake. Now, when the snake coils no, at one corner, it seems to be harmless. But if you touch it with a stick, no, it worries up to you, no, it's, uh, it's hood, so it's ready to bite. So, the same thing now you're smiling. No, no dosa. But if, no, someone insults you, that your dosa will come and you are ready to fight. So, you know, that dosa is very hot. So, in some angels, if they have dosa mula chaita, they immediately die. And also with the brahma, you know, they have the fine material body. So, they could not have the dosa mula chaita. If dosa mula chaita arises, then they die. For us, dosa mula chaita arises very frequently. Nothing happens. <laughs> so, you are used to that. And you are immune, <laughs> immune to the, the, the dosa. <laughs> so it is very heat, so you, you get used to it. So you don't feel the hotness very much. 
Actually, it is very, very hot. <laughs> very, very hot. Now the next one is Asa. Asa is ac actually it is envy or jealousy. Now Asa usually looks to other people. No, they looks to other people, and when the other people are better than you, no, in position, in business, or in something, in beauty, so you get the jealousy. No, there is the Asa, the Asa. No, the same thing with the girls, with the women. Oh, if, the, uh, if another girl is more attractive, and many men are you not know, giving attention to to that girl, so she feels jealous for that. <laughs> so the jealousy. <laughs> so and the uh, matriya uh, is the opposite of that. No, the opposite of that. So matriya. So if you please look at the matriya there, has the characteristic of concealing one's property. It does not appreciate. To share one's property or special privilege with others, it takes the form of stinginess when one is reluctant to give money for charity. Uh, as mentioned in Angudra Nikaya, there are five kinds of stinginess or matriya with respect to dwelling place, families, games, recognition. And knowledge, so you may have some you know, some idea from this. So matriya, look at yourself. You no, know, it look at yourself. It's the opposite of the isa. You are better than others. You no, know, you are better than others. You are enjoying special privilege. You no, know, say say you are having a uh, a big position in a company. So you don't want other guys, other people, you no, know, to rise to your position. No, so you don't want them to rise at your position. Or if you are selling, uh, you are opening a shop. So your shop is selling very well. So another shop, no, they come to open here. So you don't want the other shops, no, to sell as bigly as your shop. So you you can see that. No, so it, because you are better than them, you don't want to, to give up this one. So again, like your house. No, you and your family only want to enjoy, not to share this out. So if the, the guest, no, the guest would come. So no, if uh, you reluctantly, you accept the the guest not to stay here. But we used to have, uh, to have the say in Myanmar. So the first day he is a golden guest, and the second day he becomes a silver guest, and the third day he becomes a bronze guest. <laughs> So the fourth day will be iron curse. <laughs> so no, you don't like to do, not to share your things with others. So some uh, the neighbors come and ah, uh, no, can I no uh, use your 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 uh, your you know, say your 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 no eggs or your bucket or something? No, you they come and do to do to, to borrow your thing. So you don't want to give them sometimes. No, because you don't want to go and say, oh, I don't have. <laughs> no, so that is also matriya. No, you have to to yourself. You don't like to share with others. The same thing with with money. No, when the the the, the people come to us for donation, so you get the the matriya on your wealth. No, so you become stingy. You don't want to give to to, to give them away. So that becomes stingy. No, so that stinginess. Is also matriya. So no, this two, no, the isa and matriya. No, remember this isa and matriya. No, you don't have any good condition, no, any good reason for no for developing this isa and matriya. That guy is better than you. He is going on his way. He is trying very, you know, the latest Cadillac like, or Mercedes car. But as soon as oh, no, you squand on them. You get them the the Asa, so you feel unhappy. No, the same thing. No, when you are no reluctant and you do share your things with others. So when the people come and try to you know, to take to, to ask for help, you don't want to give them. So again, at that time, you feel unhappy. No, like the, they collect the donation, so you don't want to to donate. So you feel unhappy during that time. So you become unhappy. Because of this isa and matriya for nothing, no. So, no. The Buddha said, if you can cut away, no, don't let this isa matriya arise in you. 
you can be happy right away. <clears throat> well, you know that. Try not to get rid of them. Aisa and Matriya. Now we go to the next one. On page 11, uh, 76, we get Kukukcha. No? Kukukcha, we call it. Now, Kukukcha has the characteristic of grieving over the evil that is done and the good that is not done. As it is useless to cry over spell milk, it is of no use to repent or feel sorry about wrong. Because you have done something wrong. You make your parents unhappy. And later you say, oh, I wrong. Not to make my parents unhappy. Or no, when you are young, no, you have the chance, say, to, to study. If you try hard, you can be no, like a, a doctor or an engineer. But because you don't study hard, no, you become just an ordinary no, the person here. So then you feel sorry. Oh, if only I walk hard at that time, I study hard. I could be a big man, a big doctor, a successful one. That means, no, that's kukukcha. So just by being remorse, no, feeling sorry for something you have already done, there is no benefit, no, no use. So it is just like crying over spilled milk, we say. No, just by crying, you don't get back the milk. So now the thing we should do is, now, in this situation, what should I do now? No, so if you reason and do something, that, uh, what why right, that would be more beneficial. Now we go to the, the last group of the Akusala, uh, we call the entry, uh, the entry, the, the, the entry ones. They are Tena, Major, and Viji Kecha. So again on page 70, no, we uh, have their meaning. On page 70, the group 4, the entry, the dull and wavering ones, we say. Now the three of them are Tina is slot, Maita is torpor, Vijikecha is subject of dull or perplexity. So, no, the, <coughs> the, the further meaning is given on page 76. So we say Tina. Now, tina is the shrinking state of the mind, like a cock's feather before fire. When one is idle due to lack of virya effort, one is under the influence of tina. It is the sickness of the chaita. So tina now makes the mind inactive. It makes the mind morbid, inactive. So it is called the sickness of the chaita. So because of tina, not the slot. You feel idle, lazy. You don't want to do anything. Especially the meritorious did. You don't want to do it. So it is the tina. And the next one is the major. So major is the morbid state of mental concomitant. So they make, you no, know, this uh, major makes the cheat seeker to be inactive and morbid. Now morbid and inactive, the same thing. In that, we also use that. So, now, when Tina and Maita, they used to, they used to no, associate with the Chaita together. Whenever Tina is present, Maita is also present. So, when they made both the Chaita and the seekers, not to be dull, inactive, and morbid, so you feel very, very lazy. No, you have a very heavy mind. You don't want to do anything. So, no, very soon you feel drowsy. So that lazy and drowsiness is brought by the Tina Maida. So Vijikecha, we already come across the Vijikecha, the subject of Dao about the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha, and the, the, not the noble training. Now, we can go to page 72 about the Sovana Chedasika, no, the beautiful mental concomitants. There are 25 of them. We also no, we also classify them into four subgroup. Now the first subgroup is Sobhana Sadharana. There are nineteen of them. No? So these chaitas, they associate with all the Sobhana chaitas. So no, here you, you can find some particular things. We say this Moha Chatuka. No, they the four, this four Chita seeker, 
they associate with all the akusala chaita. So we call them akusala sadharana. Now we are coming to this group, the sobhana sadharana. So sobhana means sobhana chaita. No, the sobhana chaita. So they will associate with all the sobhana chaita, the beautiful chaita. So whenever you have, we say, no, only these 30 are, are sobhana. All these are sobhana. No, 59 or 91 chaitas are sobhana. So whenever these chaitas arise, these 19 chaitas seekers, they always arise together. Now what are they? Please read them. No, uh, at the bottom of page 77. Sadha, faith, confidence. Sati, mindfulness or attentiveness. Hiri, moral shame. Uttapa, moral dread. Aloha, non-attachment, greedlessness, generosity. Adosa, heedlessness, goodwill. Tatra, Majat Tata, equanimity or mental balance. So these seven Jada seekers, no, they go by singly. Singly they can oppose no, their opponents. Now for the next twelve cheaters, they go by pairs. So you will get no pay pay of them. Now the first pair is Kaya Pasadi and Chaita Pasadi. Now the pasadi means tranquility, and kaya here does not mean the body. No, kaya originally it means the group. So you should take it the group of the mental concomitants. So since we are describing the jeta seekers, no, these are not the rupa; they are the jeta seekers, not the body. So you take the kaya pasadi as tranquility of mental concomitants or chaita seekers and chaita pasadi tranquility of consciousness and the next pair kaya lahuta agility or lightness of mental concomitants and chaita lahuta agility or lightness of consciousness the next pair kaya mudita elasticity of mental concomitants Chaita mudita, elasticity of consciousness. And the next page, please read. Kaya kamanyata, no, kamanyata, adaptability of mental concomitants. Chaita kamanyata, adaptability of consciousness. Kaya pagunyata, proficiency of mental concomitants. Chaita Pagunyata, proficiency of consciousness. Kayu, jukata, uprightness of mental concomitants. Chaitu, jukata, uprightness of consciousness. So, altogether, 19 of them. Now, again, if you are interested not to make a rhyme, you can do it. No, usually, we do it. No? So, here, Sadda, Sati, Hiri, Uttap, and Uttap, and then, no, Sadda, Sati, Hiri, Uttap, and this Alupa and Adosa, they are the Hetu, and Tu Hetuka, you can say, Uttap, Tu Uttapa, and Tu Hetuka. And Tatra Majata. Then Pasati Lahu Mudu Kaman Pagunyata and Ujukata. So for this sixth time you have to, no, you have to associate them with Kaya and Chaita. So you say Kaya Pasati Chaita Pasati. Kaya Lahuta Chaita Lahuta. Kaya Muduta Chaita Muduta. Kaya Kamanyata. Chaita Kamanyata Kaya Pagunyata Chaita Pagunyata Kayu Jukata Chaitu Jukata. Well, <clears throat> I think that the first seven is more significant. So it is good to know their meaning. And remember, all these are your good qualities. 
No, these agusala jade seekers, uh, they are the negative qualities. No, the negative qualities or no, the, the base qualities that will make you base and wicked. Now these are the good ones, the beautiful ones. So they are no, your good qualities. If you can cultivate them, no, so you become noble. Now sadha, please look at the sadha. No, sadha is well established confidence of faith. In the three jewels, that is Tiratana. Tiratana means three jewels, namely the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. So usually we understand Sadha as faith in the Triple Gem, no? having faith in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. No? So you believe them to be no, very noble, the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha. And you have confidence in them that they can protect you from all dangers. Now, these can, they can protect you from all dangers. So you can rely on them. You can take refuge in them. Usually, you can develop stronger faith now, by studying the attributes of the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. When you understand now, their attributes, now, the, the attributes, that they are really very, very noble, then you will have stronger faith in the triple gem. So, now that faith, the Buddha said, is the greatest treasure that you can possess in life. No, of all your possessions no, that you are going to possess in this life, this sattva is the most precious. No, and you would agree. Gem. So, no, that faith, the Buddha said, is the greatest treasure that you can possess in life. No, of all your possessions no, that you are going to possess in this life, this sattva is the most precious. No, and you would agree with the Buddha, no, if you understand well. So, in Buddhism, when you say you have faith in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha, no, we don't mean it is blind faith. No, it is not blind faith. So, no, when you say you believe in God, no, you have faith in God, but you do not know who is that God. No, that is not a person. And you cannot no, the, examine his, uh, his qualities. So in that case, you have to believe it blindly. No, you have to believe it blindly. But no, it's not the same in the, in the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha. No, they are human beings. The Buddhas are human beings. No, the Sangha are human beings. And you can, no, you can examine their qualities, their virtues. Now, when you see their virtues are very outstanding, then you, no, you develop reverence towards them. So you have faith in them. So we say Sadha is faith associated with understanding. No, it combines with wisdom. Now, without wisdom, blind faith is not good. No, that blind faith is not very strong, it's not very precious. Only when you no, have faith with your wisdom, with understanding, then no, that faith is strong. And I find out this Abhidhamma. Now, Abhidhamma learning is the best source for elevating your faith. Now, I find it myself. Now, I find it myself. Usually, since I was a boy, you know, from my childhood, I am very religious. You know, I am very pious, a very pious man. You know? But, as to you know, boy, you know, from my childhood, I am very religious. You know? I am very pious, a very pious man. You know? But, I had the chance to the study Abhidhamma only at the age of 46 years. No, before I didn't know that we should uh, study the Abhidhamma. No, we just think, oh, Abhidhamma has nothing to do with us. No, we, you do not know what is Abhidhamma. So when you do not know what is Abhidhamma, well, you have no wish to study it. So it has nothing to do with us, that's what we think. So I just keep reading the books, no, the published so by so many authors. So you may read as many books as you like. You may listen to many lectures given by many experts. 
But I can bet you would not understand Buddhism not very well and very thoroughly unless you study Abhidhamma. No? When you study Abhidhamma, now we are just going to the second chapter now, the beginning of the second chapter now. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to complete this. <laughs> no, you have to complete this. Then when you complete this, then you will find that, oh, you have a good understanding of what you know, Buddhism means. You understand it. No, so when you understand that, and it is so you know, magnificent, so subtle, you know, so systematic, so you have to admire the omniscience of the Buddha. You, know, you actually believe in his omniscience. Remember, you no, know, beside the Buddha, no other person you no know, can describe the mind. They do not know what the mind really is. You no, know, like the psychologists, they are. No, writing so many books about psychology, but none of them knows what the, you know, the mind really is. No, they are just like beating about the bush. No, you cannot get to the, no, to the center there. So, I mean, you cannot purify your mind. No, by reading those psychology, you know, in the big library, no, you read them. You don't know how to purify your mind. No, so if you cannot purify your mind, you cannot become noble. No, and you cannot enjoy that no, Nibbana happiness. You can never enjoy Nibbana happiness. No, so, the Buddha can do that. And, no, this, oh, this, uh, this you should understand in meditation. When you do inside meditation, what we describe now, you have to observe all, all, all of this. This is the gist, remember. No, just the gist. The essence means the gist. The summary, not the enlarged one. No, so just the, the shortest one, this one. No, <laughs> the shortest one. So I cannot actually you now condense a little further. So it is already the shortest. <laughs> so even if you know this, now in my case, I am very, very true and satisfied. No, so my faith in the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha, no, grew very strong after learning Abhidhamma. So you will get that chance. So just go to the end. <laughs> <laughs> you get that chance. So this faith is very, very precious. So this sadha, no, originally, it has the property of clarifying your mind. No, it has the property of clarifying your mind. So it is compared, in the next paragraph, it is compared to the unique emerald of the universe of Munak, we say, in the next paragraph. No, this sadha is compared to the unique Emerald of the universe of Buddha. Now they say if you put this emerald, no, in a, say, a pot of water, now that pot of water is dirty and it is warm and hot. Now if you put that emerald in this one, this emerald will make all the dirt to subside. So it becomes clear. And it also disperse all the heat and becomes cool. So just like that emerald, can make the dirty hot water to be clear and cool. So sutta, when it, you no, know, it associates with the mind, it clarifies the mind. It calms down, cools down the mind. Now, why, you might, you may ask. Now, when sutta associates with the mind, you no, know, it does not come alone. It comes with this group, 19, you no, know, so it's just like an army. No, so Sadha is the leader. So with all these nineteen, no, they march on. So originally the mind is occupied by Akusala Chirasika. Usually they are occupied. No? So the Moha Lopa, they occupy the mind. As soon as the Sadha group, no, they march up. All these Akusala Chirasika, they have to run away. So, actually, the beautiful Chetasikas are strong, no, stronger than Agusala Chetasika. But usually we have to say, no, about the water and fire, no, if, uh, whichever is more, no, if uh, there is uh, no, more fire, so the fire will win over water. If there is more water, water will win over fire. So the same thing like here, no, something like here. But when you have the sadha, no, but very strong sadha and with the group it comes. The lopa dosa, they, they run away. So as soon as they run away, this lopa dosa, 
are called the defilements of the mind. They make the mind dirty. No, they make the mind wicked. And they bring the mind. These lopa, dosa, moha. The Buddha said they are the worst fires. No, the worst fire, just like we say the dosa. As soon as you get dosa, no, the, those angels die. No, the, you don't feel anything because you are immune to that. No. No. So they are burning fire. So as soon as Sabir comes to the mind, they went away. So your mind would be very cool, peaceful. No, very cool, peaceful and clear. So that is the property of Sabir. Now, in clear water in the pond, when the water is clear, you can see the fish, not the prawn, swimming in the water if it is very clear. So the same thing when your mind is clear, you know, with no disturbance law of those, then you can understand the attributes of the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha very well. So you develop faith in Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. You now this one property. Now another property, you know, uh, in this case, in the next paragraph, we compare Sadha with the hand. No, you compare with a hen. Now, if a person is on a mountain of jiva, no, on a mountain of jewels where you can pick up, you know, like say the diamonds, the rubies, sapphires, oh, there are plenty of these precious stones on that mountain. So you would say, this man is very, very lucky, you would say. Don't you? Don't you say that? Now, if that man does not have any hand, his hand has been cut off, so he cannot pick up. No, he cannot pick up these jewels. No, he cannot pick up. So the same thing the Buddha said. Now to be no, in contact with the Buddha teachings, we call the Buddha sasana, no, the Buddha's dispensary, or the Buddha's teaching. We are luckier than that guy on that precious mountain. No, we are luckier than them. We are among the luckiest people now. No, because we are in contact with the, the Buddha's teaching. So, if you have sadha, no, faith, belief in the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha, you will perform many meritorious deeds. No, that sadha will lead you to perform many meritorious deeds. No, so, if you are very, very, you have the strong sadha, no, you will recall the attributes of the Buddha, the Dhamma, most of the time. No, most of the time. So you are no, accumulating karma, good karmas, oh, by many, many billion. Every day, just like today, when you listen here, no, you are now accumulating so much you know, the good karma. So these good karmas, they are much, much more precious than all the jewels, no, the, the precious stones that you can carry from that mountain. So, no, you think you will be very lucky, you have those precious stones. But I think you will be remember, no, it can be a blessing in disguise. No, it can be a blessing in disguise. No, because of that precious stone, the robbers may kill you. <laughs> so you, will, you, may, you may die very young. Now with that no, precious stones and with a lot of money, what would you do? Now that you do is you know, more or less you enjoy, try to enjoy the sense pleasure. Now that's what we do. We try to enjoy the sense pleasure. So you are just chasing out the sense pleasure without getting any real peacefulness. And when you die, so you go, you, you, know, you go to the world for both. So we say it is a blessing in disguise. No, so you are blessed just a moment, and you have to suffer a long time in the world for both. No good. No, no good. So it is much better not to have sadha. <laughs> so remember, so when you know, the Buddha said, what is the most precious possession in the world? It is sadha is the most precious possession in the world. Well, may that sadha and dhamma with you. Okay. <laughs> we stop now. <clears throat> okay. Let's share our merits again. Idam me punyam. Asvakaya vaham hotu. Where you can say together, may these merits of mine lead us to the extinction of all defilements. Idam me punyam nebanasa.
prachaya or to may these merits of mine be conducive to my attainment of nibbana imam no punya bhagam sabha satta nam dima imam no punya bhagam sabha satta nam dima imam no punya bhagam sabha satta nam dima we share these merits with all sentient beings may all sentient beings obtain the share of these merits and be well and happy always sa tu sa tu sa tu so i hope we have a long day tomorrow so tomorrow we will start at 9 that's to that's correct so true so we have we will have two session tomorrow 9 to 11 and then 2 to 4 2 to 6 well that's that's quite good no okay <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>